My husband was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis a number of years ago and his condition has deteriorated. So two years ago I took early retirement to look after him on a full-time basis. All right. Hi. 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 You better now? Hi. I have been a carer for the last 39 years. I look after, along with my husband, I look after my brother-in-law, Aidan, who is Down syndrome. His mother died uh, when she was 62 years of age. But around 13 years ago, Stephen took a massive heart attack and um, he had to give up work. Now on four years in July, uh, Stephen was here and he took a cardiac arrest in which my daughter uh, and myself resuscitated him. And in the Royal then they told me he wasn't going to live. And I said, well, you know, they wanted me to pull the plug. And I said, no, I said, when Stephen gives up, I'll give up. Until then, I said, we keep going. Our second son, Stephen, had a brain hemorrhage when he was 14 years old and he's now almost 40. So we have been caring for him for 25 years now. I'm, I'm a widower and I've been looking after Stuart on my own for the last 20 years. So his cerebral palsy also has uh, learning disabilities. I try to make him as independent as possible. Um, 26 years ago, my son uh, developed uh, schizophrenia, um, which came out of the blue. And um, I took up the caring role uh, from that time on and it's sort of been a journey, a journey of learning. If you care for a loved one, a loved one who either receives health and social care services or who is entitled to receive health and social care services, you have a right to have your needs as a carer assessed, to see what we can do to help you and support you as you care. And although we call it an assessment, it is really a process and it's a, an opportunity for you to tell me a little bit just about your caring role. When I had the first care assessment, Ralph's needs were very different and my needs were very different at that time. He was much more mobile. And then as things just gradually deteriorated, I was lucky enough to have the contact details to ask for the social worker to come back and do another assessment. She remarkably changed things. The care package was increased. We now have a carer coming in during the night to check on Ralph, which does give me a little bit more sleep time. And also they come in regularly during the day and I know that he's safe if I need to go to the shops, that there's somebody here with him and looking after him. For me, uh, it was very important that the care assessment brings in the family and bring, brought in my needs. Like, I need time to go away. I need time to, to leave here. I need time to go with my kids. I need time to spend time with the kids, to go for a walk with them to do. So the care's assessment met my needs on that one. There are times as a carer that things are going not too badly. And then there are other th times when things crop up like sickness or problems that can take the carer down emotionally as well as physically and they maybe need a different type of support at that time. Um, because we've been caring for so long, um, I find it's great to have those things and you do take the time aside to go and do those things that are, are provided for you but there are times that you get weary and you maybe just even need somebody that you can offload to and talk to and get direction from. Do you want uh, porridge or do you want cereal? You didn't really know you, you needed respite. It's only when you started doing the assessment and we got the assessment. So the social worker says, well, I think for Alexa Stewart to give the, your pressure, you need Stewart to go out. You know, we need a couple of hours at night, you know. You need a bit of a hand for him in the morning, to give him a hand in the morning. So, when well, the assessment started, and then what did I need in the assessment? Then I went to direct payments. So the trust then turned and said, well, okay, we think you're entitled to this. And I had no problems, but the social workers that I have are very, very good. We as carers get so wrapped up in the caring role that we forget to live for ourselves and we should learn to be able to live for ourselves. 
A CARES assessment is probably not a good name. It's not to check if you are able to care or to see if you're caring in a good enough way. A CARES assessment is to have a think about your own health and well-being and the impact that caring for your loved one is having on you. We want to see what the trust can offer to, to help support you as you care. As a result of the assessment and putting in place a support plan, we should be offered, able to offer you a cash grant perhaps, a personal budget, perhaps a short break from caring. There are a range of care organisations that we can link you to. They offer telephone support when you're having a bad moment, they offer support groups, they offer a range of programmes that get you out of the house and give you a wee bit of space for you, time for you. Your, care, your key worker will offer you this assessment. If they don't offer you it, ask for it. You have a right to that and we want to help you. So by doing this assessment, we can help you care. The main way that a carer can access an assessment is through their GP. Uh, I mean, GPs are well placed to be able to make those connections with community teams or who's the best service um, to carry out the assessment with any individual carer. Um, they can also speak to if there's a, a member of staff involved with the family already, they can ask them to make the arrangements for the assessment to be provided. Or they, they can in some cases, if they're having any difficulty at all, what I would say is get in touch with your local care coordinator and ask them to, to make sure that someone picks up the referral. There is the support for carers and that carers can get a support assessment done that will help them and let the um, trusts know the needs that they have. Too many carers feel isolated. They feel that there is no one there for them. Um, and there is no need today, like me 26 years ago, to struggle along on their own. Um, the support's there. You just have to network. You know, a lot of people are carers and what they do, they just sit in the house. You know, but that's not the way to do it. If you get out and you network and then you find out, what different things happen, you know, what's what's going to happen, you know. And I'm not too bad here because Stuart has been here for all his life. So the community, you know, Stuart can go into anybody's house around this, goes next door, or goes, there's a party at, on down the street a bit, so he, he would do that, you know. But that means when he's there, I know that he's being looked after. You will be used to your district nurse or your social worker, your key worker coming into your house because of the person you care for. They will offer a separate assessment for you. It should be in your own home. It should be with space for you to have time to reflect and think of what caring is like for you and the impact it has had on your life. The assessment was good in that I was given a choice of venue and time that suited me. So I was able to arrange to have the assessment at home. Um, I was given contact details of the social worker should any of those things change. It also helped identify information, relevant up-to-date information that was available to me. It was very relaxed I find to be able to sit down and chat about me which you don't often get, it's all, my whole life revolves around my caring role. So it made me actually sit and think of the things that I need and things that were important to me. And probably one of the things very important is I get regular breaks. I read in the local paper about a walking group starting up for carers. I joined it and it has been a lot of fun. It was during the carers then when, we, when we're walking along we have uh, chat about this and that and it was uh, they mentioned about the, the assessment for our carers. I had vaguely heard about an assessment but I wasn't really that fussed about going for it because I thought well sure if I haven't had a, an assessment for the last 30 years there's no point in me going for it now but I was um, maybe I just thought maybe I would give it a wee bit of a chance so uh, eventually the social worker came out of the house and uh, had a wee chat with me a very informal chat and uh, that really opened up a lot of doors for me. We had went to see 
our son's social psychiatric social worker and because we were quite distressed um, the social worker just suggested that um, she would do um, an assessment of our needs as carers. The first thing I was told um, was that as a carer you put yourself first. I found it very strange but when it was explained to me that if you're not well in yourself you're not going to care for someone as well as you could if you were in good health and I have proved that down through the years and I do um, be quite disciplined and I take time for myself just to go and have wee treats and time alone for myself so that when I come home I'm feeling a wee bit brighter and a bit more positive and a bit more relaxed and therefore I have more patience to help my son when he does need that help. We will put in place as a result of that um, assessment a plan. A simple plan, what support do you need, what support do you already have, what else could we support you with. You will get a copy of that assessment and a copy of that assessment will stay with the member of staff who has completed that. And as a result of that, we will start putting in place whatever supports have been agreed as a result of that conversation. At the moment, I am the drum major of St Bridget's Corning Band, a local band set in the village here. My biggest problem with going to band practice is Stephen requires medications. I'm the only person that can give the medications. So I might go to practice and come home again. And if things are settled, I might go back out again. Uh, it's my lifeline. If I'm not well, well, Stephen, who's going to look after him if I'm sick? I'm now 26 years on and uh, I think I've learnt a lot over those 26 years in caring duties. Duties that probably I would like to maybe help other people with and that's why I belong to the Carers Strategy Group uh, here in Northern Ireland representing all carers. Um, we look at um, how we can support carers, uh, what is best for carers and maybe trying to find the carers who haven't come forward in the past uh, to let them know that we are here and we're going to do everything we can to give them help and any support they might need. I wouldn't go any other way, no matter what anybody says. Uh, the direct payments, you're in full control. Now I know a lot of people say, well you have to employ people, but the Centre for Independent Living will do all the big work for you. You just tell them what your hours at the end of the month and they'll work out the wages and they send it back to you and then you just pay your employees and because we're all bank and you know, I'm on the computer so I don't have to go to the bank I just pay I just get their bank details and just pay all the money out. When I get out I try to go for a walk or for a swim every day and I also do um, some jogging I find that actually if I go out first thing in the morning makes me feel fresh and invigorated for the rest of the day. I suppose it's the difference between coping and not coping. As time goes on and you're caring for a long period of time, you will notice your health deteriorating, uh, physically and your mental health as well. So you do have to look after yourself. I would encourage you as a carer to come forward and take part in the carer's assessment. It's your right and it will help you to move forward and get the support you need.